Um, yeah, those who follow me on Twitter will see I have wear a fancy Star Wars dress on there. This is related to my company's last Christmas video, which was about Star Wars. So they will be big, pretty proud of me if I'm presenting on stage with a Darth Vader mask on there. So thanks for that. <laughs> um, yeah, welcome to my talk about secure input and output handling. Uh, this is a new talk which uh, involved from my last talk uh, I gave last year. And this is basically stuff I think it's important to remember and keep in mind when you develop with Magento. And yeah, I hope you get some stuff um, which you can apply. Um, yeah, sh some short words about me. My name is Anna. I'm from Austria, um, not from the Netherlands. I'm not sure if it's not. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, I used to be a software developer for quite some time. I created my first HTML, HTML website back in 1999, and it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I used to be a Java developer before and jumped into Magento five years ago. Um, I work at Lamsoda. We're an online agency based in Vienna. So let's start my talk with a short story. Once upon a time, there was a little customer attribute and this little customer attribute uh, was named academic title because the customer wanted to have, uh, or the merchant wanted to have the customers enter their academic title during registration. Um, so what happened? The developers created a, a text field um, to enter the academic title because the merchant wanted to have it, like they can type it in because there are like, I don't know, 50 or 100 uh, academic titles which you can have in Austria and it's quite a lot. So that was created pretty straightforward. And one day, we had to export uh, customer data. And I found some interesting entries there. Those are not academic titles. Um, yeah. Apart from having like spam customers in the shop, this doesn't really make sense, right? It's just something. Um, actually, there was no code in the database. <laughs> yeah, there, there's nice stuff in there, men with high heel shoes and so on. Um, so we get rid of this. And yeah, actually, I want to tell you how we continued and at the end of the talk. So what is our daily business? Um, input, process, and output. I think that's one of the basic things which you learn maybe in the first or second class of engineering school or wherever you go to be and work um, um, to train for a software developer. So you get an input from somewhere. This is usually uh, an input. Uh, can be pressing a button or entering a text. You process it like you do some calculation with it and you output it again in a way somewhere. Um, yeah. Next thing is, um, there is a really nice graphic which I like to reuse because it's still up to date even though it's from 1980 where I guess most of us weren't even born. Um, so hardware develops very quickly, then the software follows and actually the last one we take care of is security. Um, actually a good, a good example for the, for the last graph is Internet of Things. We got a lot of hardware devices, we got a lot of applications, but we live in a world uh, where ha uh, so, uh, cars can be hacked with songs, and we live in a world where Barbies can spy your homes. So uh, cross-site scripting is real. That's a real issue we are faced as web developers, right? And also in the latest Magento patch, there were again seven cross-site scripting issues fixed. So I think this is one, one part where we should really take care of. So what I'm basically saying is, stop that last minute security. That's a kind of mindset um, which like some people like, do have. It's we do the coding. I know time is often a problem. We want to get it done quickly. And maybe security gets fixed in the last few minutes or hours, uh, if ever. Um, but the thing is, secret coding doesn't really take longer. If you, have, if you always keep it in mind, um, you can apply it quickly. And the other thing is, as you've seen with the academic title, I think having the right input and the right data is also a, a matter of data quality. It's not just a question of security. And I would say having uh, good data quality also relates somehow to software quality. I guess these, these three are related in a way. So 
please always keep security in mind and there are just a few little things uh, which you need to do. So every feature adds a risk. Every extension you install adds a risk and I'd like to extend this to every input output adds a risk. I know that's a bit uh, like over the top maybe and maybe too much but I think it comes down to this pretty well. You might have a nice online shop on a secure server with great hosting. Um, yeah, and then you just add a little attribute that messes up everything. And it looks like this. Let's start with the input. So um, front-end input validation. Why, why should you do front-end input validation? I think one, one point is user experience. Um, it's actually really nice to have the user, uh, get the, give the user feedback as soon as he enters some stuff or at least when he tries to um, submit the form. Um, you can stop unwanted input in the moment when it occurs. Um, and another thing is also, you don't really need to send crazy requests to your server. You can stop it client side. Um, yeah, and what, what's, uh, what I was talking about data quality is, I only want to store what I'm expecting. So if I expect a telephone number, I don't want to do any crazy characters around it. Or if I'm expecting academic titles, I don't need to have an input field which stores 255 characters in the database, right? That, that's, that's just too much because I will probably need only 20. Don't fill up your database with garbage is the key. So for the front-end validation, uh, we had in Magento 1 this nice uh, JavaScript, which has 51 validation rules. There are even more in Magento 2, um, which are 74 now. I'm sorry for the slide, I just want, wanted to mention them in the talk. Um, it's like there are validators for a min text length and the max text length for email addresses, for kind of vehicle numbers in the US and zip codes and dates. So there is quite a lot out of the box which you can use to validate uh, your input forms. So I guess next time when you add just one form or one little input field um, to your forms, just have a look on the list or in the file what, what is there and what you can use. It's also easy to add your own validator. Um, this is Magento 2 code, you can see it on the, on the right um, edge, right upper edge. Um, that there's just uh, this additional define which you need to add and the rest is like pretty much or pretty similar to Machine to one. So it's easy to implement your own. Um, the next example is taken from the Machine to two customer registration. The data, validi data validate uh, attribute, this is how you implement your own validators in HTML. So you have date validate, required true for a required field, and then your validate name. Bonus, don't remove the area required attribute because this is need for web accessibility reasons. Um, this is the example for the passwords, showing the equal to. So you have the password, which needs to be entered twice. Um, so you have again required true and uh, validate the password. And down here it says equal to, so you can validate on the front end um, if those two entries match. <coughs> so. Why is front-end validation not enough? Uh, I'm sorry for the example, I know it's German. Basically it says drink a Coke with Pepsi, um, which Co Coca-Cola didn't want to have, obviously. But this guy actually, well, hacked the, um, the, web, ha the website they had and uh, he was able to enter Coke. Why? Because Coca-Cola only, only added a front-end validation so he got an, an error when he wanted to enter Pepsi there. Um, but he was able to modify the post request. And there is also another example where it was like drink your Coke with sugar, so you could just send anything there. So if you validate on the front end, you should also validate on the back end. Um, don't trust the user, don't trust them at all, don't trust any input you get in your web application. 
because there is actually a lot more than uh, user input forms and crazy people entering crazy stuff automated or manually. You've got web services, you've got cookies, you get some uh, query results and you've got some variables from your server and these are all things that can be mani manipulated easily. So how to validate input rules in the backend? Again, for Magento 1 and Magento 2, um, we've got the data abstract class, uh, which is pretty much the same, Magento 1 and 2, and this one has, this is the example from Magento 2 again. Uh, also, backend input validation rules for alphanumeric, numeric, alpha, email, URL, date, and if I'm right, it's implemented for text and date and some other kind of types which you use uh, regularly uh, in Magento. But there is more, especially Magento 2, uh, also Magento 1 comes uh, with the send package and there is a send validator. So you can also use the send validator classes to, you, um, to validate your input. So there is again a big set which is prepared, which um, validates for alphanumeric, for barcodes, the date again, host names, um, all the kind of stuff. So it makes also sense to have a look at this. Output. Why do we need to escape or encode the output? Because we've validated everything at the input. Um, so you gotta say the things that are stored in my database are fine. Uh, maybe, maybe someone just didn't take care uh, enough. So cross-site scripting can still happen from anywhere and it's a matter of protecting your users and also protecting yourself from any crazy things that come across from stealing admin sessions and so on. Um, why don't we store escape data? Because it's actually bad. You will need the data um, like maybe once on a website and for an export. And so it's better to prepare the data for the output where you need it. Um, those are the methods Magento 2 um, actually um, I think the word, uh, recommends to use in the templates. So this is escape HTML, escape vote, escape URL, and escape XSS in URL. What do they do? Escape HTML um, has an optional parameter to uh, whitelist uh, allowed tags. And internally, it's an HTML special chars, which is on this slide. I know you won't be able to read it uh, at the back. Basically, you can pass an array, and then it iterates uh, through the array, calling the method again. And here you can see the result is uh, used, uh, is parsed into HTML special chars with the end combat attribute, which does only escape uh, the double quotes, UTF-8 uh, as encoding, um, yeah. So this was escape HTML. Then there is uh, escape quote, which is um, does only escape the quotes inside the HTML attribute. So you should use it uh, when you yeah when you work with attributes. Um, it also has an additional parameter at slashes, uh, which you can set for escaping JavaScript that's inside the HTML attribute. So then there is escape URL, which, can, which you can use for escaping HTML entities in URLs, which again uses HTML special chars internally. And the fourth one is escape XSS in URL, which basically um, just removes JavaScript from the URL and again calls HTML special chars internally. Those are the recommended um, methods to use in Magento 2, which are considered secure. Um, that's every method that has uh, HTML already in the function name. Then it's, as mentioned, the escape HTML. Um, you don't need to escape data that gets parsed like to an integer or that uses count. Uh, you also don't need to escape simple strings in single quotes or double quotes. And here is again a use of escape X XSS in URL if you, end, if you output any URL. And yeah, again, this is a function with, which uses uh, HTML and the function name. Um, yeah. 
So testing, we also heard that we should take care of tests. Um, so if you want to test the uh, XSS security for, of your template files, Magento 2 comes with a stan standard static test, which is XSS PHTML template test. Uh, you can find it on the link that is mentioned. Actually, it's pretty easy to use. So it takes you like, I don't know, one minute to run it, depending on, on your project. And you just need to enter Magento dev test run static in this case, and then you get an output. For example, here it says, potentially XSS vulnerability, please verify the output is escaped at lines, and then there is a long number. And you see, uh, in this case, we failed escaping stuff. So this is really easy in Magento 2, how you can check your templates for XSS security. So you wonder what happened to our little attribute. Um, yeah, we removed the weird customer data that was obviously spam. Um, we of course added front end validation. It's still a text field. Um, drop down whitelisting would be an option too for the attribute. Um, we added server side validation, of course, and again we, che we checked and escaped the output. So. The summary, what you should keep in mind and take away from the talk is design your software responsibly. Always, if you add a new attribute, think what kind of data you expect and what you want to store. Use UTF-8 as encoding all the way. Think about the front-end validation, but also think about the server-side validation. Um, also keep in mind the data storage. You don't need uh, 255 characters to store an academic title. Um, escape the output in the template files and include it in your tests. So, here's a happy end tag for you. I hope there was some useful information. Thank you.